Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Every integer is even or odd, but not both. Now, our definition of an even and odd integer is as follows. Suppose a is an integer. We say a is even if there exists an integer k such that a is equal to 2k. We say a is odd if there exists an integer k such that a is equal to 2k plus 1. Now in proving this theorem, we are going to use the following theorem. Suppose a and b are integers where b is greater than 0 then there are unique integers q and r which satisfy a equals bq plus r and 0 is less than or equal to r is less than b. This theorem is sometimes called the division algorithm. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now, since we're trying to prove a statement about every integer, let's give ourselves an arbitrary integer. I'll call it n. The whole goal is to show that n is even or odd but not both. Now, let's start out by applying the division algorithm. We'll take a to be n and b to be 2. If we do that, then there are unique integers q and r, which satisfy n equals 2q plus r, and 0 is less than or equal to r is less than 2. Okay, but since 0 is less than or equal to r is less than 2, and r is an integer, we know that the only integers that satisfy this inequality are 0 and 1. So either r is equal to 0 or r is equal to 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to prove in either case, we have that n is even or odd, but not both. Let's start with case 1, where r is equal to 0. Well then n is equal to 2q plus 0. So n is equal to 2q. So we see that n is equal to 2 times an integer, which tells us that n is even. So we've shown that n is even, so all that's left to show is that n is not odd. We'll assume for a contradiction, we instead have that n is odd. Well then, by our definition, this means that there is some integer k such that n is equal to 2k plus 1. Now let's also note that 0 is less than or equal to 1 is less than 2. The reason why we're saying this is because these two facts tell us that q must be equal to k and r must be equal to 1. Because, remember, q and r are unique integers which satisfy these two statements. Which means q and r are the only integers which make these two statements turn out true. Well, we see that k and 1 make them turn out true, so q must be equal to k and r must be equal to 1. But this contradicts the fact that r is equal to 0. Our assumption that n is odd leads to a contradiction, so we must instead have that n is not odd. So because we've shown n is even but not odd, this means we have shown that n is even or odd, but not both. So this completes case one. Now let's move on to case two, where r is equal to one. And again, we want to show that n is even or odd, but not both. Now since r is equal to one, we have that n is equal to 2q plus one. Right? And this tells us, by your definition, that n is odd. So we've shown that n is odd, so all that's left to show is to show that n is not even. Well, assume for contradiction, we instead have that n is even. Well then, by our definition, this means that there is some integer k such that n is equal to 2k. Now I'm actually going to rewrite this as 2k plus 0. And let's note that 0 is less than or equal to 0 is less than 2. The reason why we're saying this is because these two facts tell us that q must be equal to k 
and R must be equal to zero. Because remember, Q and R are the only integers which make these two statements turn out true. Well, we have integers K and zero which make these two turn out true. So Q must be equal to K, R must be equal to zero. But this contradicts the fact that R is equal to one. Our assumption that n is even leads to a contradiction, so we must instead have that n is not even. So we've shown that n is odd, but not even. Therefore, we have shown n is even or odd, but not both. So we're done. So in either case, we have shown that n is even or odd, but not both. Therefore, that must be true. And that means we have completed the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.